If you're fairly new to SketchUp, you might be a little bit confused about groups and components. We're going to go through some basics and talk about when to use each one, and then I'm going to show you some examples of how to use them in a nested fashion. That means groups inside of groups or components inside components. That's going to help you keep your scenes organized and your modeling efficient. Okay. Let's start off by just first identifying the difference between a group and a component. When we have raw geometry, we want to identify it and, and isolate it from the other geometry in our model. We're going to select the geometry, we're going to right click and say make a group. When I do this, it shows up in my outliner over here. And we can name this group and we can call it, let's just call it cube. If I copy this cube and I make changes to it, only the cube that I changed will reflect, only the cube that I, I edited will reflect the changes. If I take the same cube and I copy it over here, and you can see now I've got three cubes, if I right click on this group, now I can say make component, and it gives me the opportunity to change, to name it, I'm going to call it cube 2, and create. Now you look up here, I've got cube 2, and it's got a different icon to indicate that it's a component, and now if I make a copy of this cube 2, and I start making changes, anything that I do to this component is going to also happen to the copy of the cube 2. And it doesn't matter which one I change, they're both exactly the same and they both reflect all the changes that are happening. This is really useful when you're repeating multiple things throughout your model. Um, chair legs, cabinet hardware, um, light fixture pieces, that kind of thing. Um, when you want to change one thing, you want it to change across all of the items that are exactly the same. Um, so what we're going to look at then is what happens when you have groups inside of groups. So I can take these two cubes and I can make a group out of that. And then you'll see I've got a group with two cubes in it and this is also a group. So within the group, I can move things around and change them. And then grouped together, they can be treated as a single entity as well. Okay, And I can do that with components as well. I can group my components, and I can treat this whole thing as its own entity, but because these are components. This group and this group both have the same cube 2 component in it. So when I make changes to the component, it changes within all of the components. But if I move things around, the group itself is unique, and so this group and this group don't affect each other. So components inside groups are useful because they isolate individual pieces while maintaining the component aspect of the of the elements that are repeating. All right, so now let's look at a practical example of how we use this concept in a model. All right, let's start just with this. This is a cabinet. There are no components involved here. Everything is a group. Which is geometry inside geometry inside geometry. Now, if I make this cabinet box, let's give it a name.
if I make this group a component, the whole thing is a component and inside the component are the elements that are groups. So if I make a copy of this component and I make any changes, Just going to maybe make everything a little bit smaller. You'll notice that the changes are happening to both of the elements. Both of the components are changing the same. Cabinet and cabinet all have the same things inside of them. If I wanted to change the color of the hardware, I'm changing the group. The group inside the component changes across both of them. But what if I want all of the hardware to change? The doors and the drawers have the same hardware and they all need to be the same color. What we need to do then is this handle needs to be a component. So then I'm going to select this one. I'm going to make it a component. And I'm going to repeat this component. I'm going to see now this is the component called handle. And this is just a group called handle. Right now they're both being reflected the same on each because the whole thing is a component and this whole thing is a component. So everything that happens to this whole component also happens to this whole component. So over here, I'm going to delete that handle. I'm going to select this one, which is the component, and I'm going to make a copy of that. And I'm going to put it back where it needs to go. And now, because the handle is a component and it's the same component and I change the color or I make it longer because these elements are all the same thing they get changed all at the same time because they're the same component. And then anything still that's happening inside of this component is being reflected even though these elements are groups. So where we need to start thinking about, so we need to start thinking about how we want things nested, what things are going to be repeating. Now let's use the example that I'm going to have a cabinet that is all drawers, but I want this drawer and this handle to all be repeated throughout. So now I've got a cabinet here. I'm going to make another cabinet. I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to explode it. Okay, now I've got everything outside. I've got a box, I've got a drawer, I've got a handle and a handle which are still components even though they're not inside the other component. I'm going to make this whole thing a group and now and actually let's make it a component too and we'll call it cabinet drawers. So now I've got cabinet and I've got cabinet drawers. So in this group, in this component, I'm going to delete the door. I'm going to delete that handle. I'm going to select this door, this drawer, and this component handle. 
and I'm going to make that a component. So now, inside my cabinet drawer component, I've got, we should have named this, let's change the name of it, we can go and call it drawer. Now I've got cabinet drawers, I've got a drawer, and I've got a handle. So it's a component, inside a component, inside a component. I'm going to copy this. Let's do it like this. We'll copy, move in copy mode. Set that drawer there. Divide by four. Nope, let's divide by three. Whoops divide by three. Now I've got cabinet over here, cabinet over here. Now remember inside this cabinet this drawer is not a component but inside this cabinet this drawer is a component. So if I make changes to this drawer, all the drawers are affected. And if I make changes to this handle, which is across all of the cabinets, they all change. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Now again, these two pieces are components, so if I change the countertop, let's change it to blue. These two change, but those two don't because these are a different component. So this is a good example of components inside components inside components when you need them and when you don't. So I know this can be a little bit confusing. Um, it's helpful if you think about what elements you need to repeat throughout your model, what elements you need to be unique. Things that should be components are the things that are going to be repeated multiple times. Door faces, handles, if you're talking about light fixtures, you've got repeating glass candelabras that go around or the arms on the chandelier, um, furniture pieces, things like pillows or legs on the chairs. Um, most of those times those things are components because you're changing one, you're also changing the other. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And then take a look at these videos for some more modeling tips.